I'm gonna be auditing five cold emails that made their way into my inbox. We're back at it again with another episode of cold email auditing. I'll be your host, Mr. Ravi Abuvala. We have generated tens of millions of dollars from cold email and our company in scaling with systems. And in today's video, I'm gonna be auditing five different cold emails that made their way into my inbox, what I would do to change them, to have them start performing, and what I would rank them one out of 10 so that you know what to stay away from and which ones to model after. All right, email number one, we are getting from Aurelian Amakar, and this is JV Opportunity Systems IO highest paying offer of the year. So if you've seen some of my other videos where I audit some emails, you can tell already that there's three main parts that I talk about with email copywriting. The first is the subject line. The second is the first line of text that convinces someone to keep on reading. And the third is the whole body slash call to action. And the issue that I see a lot of people making in the subject line is that they put their company name in the subject line, which is great if someone knows what system.io is, but I'll be frank with you. I have have no idea what system.io is and my company's name is scaling with systems right so um system io's highest paying offer of the year that's not bad but at the same time this has no personalization in it whatsoever so this person aurelian uh, obviously just took this email and blasted it to 10,000 people and so why should i respond if i don't feel like this is per the perfect fit for me why should i as the end client of this even care about responding so i would change the uh, subject line to be like something like uh you're the perfect fit or quick question, something that makes it think that this email is just for me. Hello, comma. I definitely would add a first name after that. No personalization whatsoever. Systems.io has collaborated with some of the biggest uh, names in the industry to create a free offer pack with value for your audience. Names like Richard Sheffrin, Dan Locke, Ryan Levesque, uh, Dan Sharp, Jason something, and Rob Douglas and more. So, okay, a uh, few things I would do right off the bat here. Like I've said in my other videos, the first line of text is the most important to hold email. Great copywriting is just getting someone's permission to read the next line. And so if the first line is systems.io has collaborated with, whoa, okay, who are you? Why should I care? Like, where did you find me? These are all things that you have to address in someone's mind. It's like writing a really good sales letter. So that's something that we do with our clients at Scaling with Systems. And there's a, people just throw words on the page right and what they don't understand is there needs to be a correct order of operations for the words that you think there because when someone gets something they don't know there is literally a scientific order of operations in their brain that happens how did you find me who are you why should i trust you right all of these things need to be established before we get to the call to action and uh aurelian here excuse me if i'm pronouncing the name wrong just went straight for the throat so i would have said hello ravi uh I came across your company, Scaling Systems, when I was looking for amazing uh, potential partners for our company, Systems.io. Systems.io is a company that does X, Y, and Z, and we've worked with some of the largest names like Bob, uh, Rich Sheffrin, Dan Locke, Ryan Levesque, and more. Then, uh, I think you'd be a great fit for a serious JV partner, um, and in return, uh, we can either promote your offer to our 70,000 active list or offer you an upfront payment. Right, so that there, like establish some credibility, establish who you are. I do like that they name dropped in here, so that's a good thing at least, but once again, it's just like, it would be like me walking up to a girl on, on the street and be like, um, how do I phrase this correctly? So I see some girl walking up the street and I go to her and I'd be like, uh, yeah, so dinner tonight at seven o'clock. Okay, cool. I'll see you there. It's just like, uh, what? Who are you? Why me? These are the things you have to keep in mind. And I always think that dating and uh, prospecting have a lot of commonalities in it. So uh, if you're bad at dating, um, well, then maybe prospecting isn't for you. So uh, does this sound worth exploring? Best regards, Aurelian. And the other thing that I don't love about this is, man, is this stuff big right here, right? So this just screams cold message sent to 10,000 people. Um, and I don't, I, you know, and some people might disagree with me here. I do not love the profile image, the logo, all of the links to their stuff, the, uh, you know, all of this stuff here, their website, this free button down here. It's just like, I never signed up to this person's email list and this is way too much information. And as soon as I open this email, as soon as I see all this, I'm exiting out. I don't even read the rest of the email. So keep it so that it looks like someone actually spent the time to type this out and send it to you. Um, and you'll have a much higher response rate from that. Overall, I'd probably give this email a three out of 10. All right, email number two here is from Chris. It says a re response or reply, RE, this is a Ravi question. Okay, so not a bad uh, subject line, to be honest with you, because it is it looks like a much more personalized subject line. I actually really love subject lines where the first letter is a lowercase letter. I've, I've literally sent tens of thousands of emails, so some of this stuff may seem a little bit 
extra for some of you people, but you know, when you're, when you're sending an email quickly from your phone, you, you sometimes don't even capitalize the first letter in the subject line. So it make, it's different. It's unique. It makes it look like this person just sent this email to me. I'll tell you another little quick bonus for those of you that are enjoying this video. I have had the highest response rates in the world when I had an advertising agency and I would send cold emails. That was the main way we would acquire clients. And at the very bottom, I would put that line that said sent from my iPhone. Now this was years ago. I don't think iPhone even does that anymore, but it would say sent from my iPhone. And so it just made it look so much more personalized. And like, I literally typed this out on my phone. So think of ways that you can do that. So this person feels like, okay, you're not, they're not a number in 10,000 emails that you're sending. Uh, haven't heard back from you. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. So I've talked about this in some of my other videos. This is obviously a response to an earlier email that they sent me. Now, Chris, I am going to give bonus points here to Chris because what he has done is what I notice a lot of people don't do is he has put his follow-up emails in the same thread as his original email. This is so important because haven't heard back from you. I'm not sure what happened. What am I going? What did we just talk about the last person? Who the hell are you? Why do you care what happens to me? Like, what do you do? And I, now at least I can go back to the beginning, which it looks like is the bottom here. The first email they sent me and get a little bit more context. Now, the one piece of feedback I would give Chris, if I was talking to Chris or he's a client of mine was that I don't, mind the follow-up emails, but what I would really love to see is a, at least one line of reference in the follow-up email. So I haven't uh, heard back from you. I'm not sure what happened. Just as a reminder, my name is Chris and I help X, Y, Z. So that way, if I wanted to read the rest of the text, I could remember copywriting is just getting someone's permission to read the next line. So if I have to go dig into my emails or dig into this message here, just to figure out who you are, it's over. You've lost. I'm not going to do it. Right? So. Um, if I looked back down here again, I can see his original email. So let's just audit his original email. Hey, Ravi, Chris here. You've never heard of me. Okay. So what I've talked about this in a few of my other videos as well in your email inbox, if you go to Gmail or Apple or God forbid you use something like hotmail and you look in the actual platform, the email platform, you get a subject line when you're looking at an email and you get something called a pre header text, which is the first like one to 10 words in the email before you even open the email. So what we always want to do is we want to make the subject line and the preheader text work together. And then we want to make the first line of text, that preheader text look like, uh, it was like a very personalized email that you're just sending to this one person and that will skyrocket your open rates. So if I was looking at this before I even opened this email and I read, this is a Ravi question. Okay. I'm curious about this. And then the first line that I see in that preheader text says, Chris here, you've never heard of me. I'm out. I'm okay. This is someone selling me something. I don't care. Why do I care if I've never heard of Chris before? Right? So instead I might be like uh, Ravi, uh, Chris here, love the videos that I've seen online of you doing X, Y, and Z that panders to my huge ego. And I'm like, Oh, well, let me open the email and see what this is about. Right. Um, and then, and then they can say, you may have never heard of me. Right. But it's past the preheader tax from a phar pharmacist turned sales guy to a lawyer turned mega internet marketer. Okay. Okay. Once again, W I I F M. What is in it for me? Why, why do, why do I care of your, your little mini story here? Right. I created a video for you and your team shared a revenue driven new strategy below for your offer. Let me know if we can chat, uh, if a chat makes sense. Uh, okay. So here are a few additional adjustments I would do here. So Ravi, uh, uh, Chris here came across your company scaling with systems when I was looking for X, Y, and Z. Um, our company, uh, looks like creative dough or D E A U X D E U X. Uh, our company creative dough helps, uh, offers just like you skyrocket to seven figures in six months or less, or their money back. Uh, I created a video for your team walking through exactly how we do it for you. Uh, get access to it here. Let me know if you chat and make sense. Here's my booking link, right? So one and also social proof. Okay. From a pharmacist turned sales guy to a lawyer turned mega internet marketer. And if, for those that are watching this video that are in the internet marketing world, anybody that calls himself a mega internet marketer, I mean, with no disrespect to Chris, I don't want to talk to, um, you know, I, I am mega internet marketer, the mega internet marketers. I know they don't call themselves mega internet marketers. And so also I think internet marketers also have a bad um, rep, they have like a bad, uh, like there's a co bad connotation when someone says internet marketer. Now I, I started as an internet marketer. I would consider myself a business owner now, but I was and ran my business like an internet marketer for years. And for me, at least I can, I see it as a, um, as a negative, I see it as a negative connotation. So I would not include that personally in my cold email. Um, 
Now, the things I'll, I'll, I'll give Chris on here is obviously he has some cute things here. Like if you play your cards right, I might even tell you the lamest joke I know. And the other at the beginning of the follow up email says, I don't know if alligators ate the last few notes that you, I sent you. So it's like, you know, and then at the bottom here, it says below average vodka drinker. So it's like, you know, OK, these are cute little things. Uh, I'll give him a few points for, I guess, being cute. But as a B2B person, there's some huge, huge things that you're missing here. And if, especially if you're trying to tell me how I should drive a revenue strategy for my business. I need more context on you. And I think um, this email needs a little bit of work. So all in all, I'd probably give this email a four out of 10. Email number three is from Mr. Tim Richards. Quick question about your ad services. Boom, Tim. Way to go, my man. I actually like this one. Um, now, I will say, I just reread this email. He's talking about the advertising agency that I used to run. Uh, I had an advertising, uh, a multiple seven figure advertising agency called Prospect Social, where we service real estate agents. I no longer have that company anymore, but let's say I did have that company. Um, Tim would say, quick question about your ad services. If I did have that company, that would be appealing to me because I'm like, oh, wow, this is maybe a client. Uh, and say, hey, Ravi. Um, and also, hey, Ravi, it's like there needs to be, I, I really don't like grammatically incorrect stuff on cold emails. It's just, I think it's use a free software like Grammarly, put it inside of there, make sure you're not looking like a fool when you're sending the emails out. Because in my eyes, I'm like, okay, if this person can't grammatically type correctly, what else is wrong? I, I'm a firm believer in how you do one thing is how you do everything. So uh, hey, Ravi, uh, bumped into your LinkedIn profile when I was looking for Facebook ads experts. Let's go back to what I talked about previously. The subject line matches the uh, the pre-header text and they both seem very personalized. So this is going to have a really high open rate. Uh, so bumped into your LinkedIn profile when I was looking for a Facebook ads expert. We developed an, a an API way platform that helps marketers integrate Facebook, TikTok lead forms with Google Sheets, CRM, and 50 more marketing apps for automatic uh, client transfers between apps. Okay. Not bad. Uh, I've talked about this in a few other videos as well. I recommend everybody that's doing cold email use a software called, uh, it's a website called Hemingway app and it makes your text much more easier to understand. So you always want to put text in there and make it like a third grade to fifth grade reading level. And this line is a little bit of a run on line and it's really uh, like, in a cold email, if someone gets confused at all, they're just going to exit out. So you want to clean this up a little bit. So, Hey, Ravi bumped in your LinkedIn profile when I was looking for Facebook ads experts, I'm reaching out because, uh, uh, our company API way, uh, developed a platform that helps marketers integrate their Facebook and TikTok lead form ads with, uh, 50 plus more marketing apps via API period. Right? So just take out some of that other stuff that's inside there and make that the thing. Uh, we work with clients such as X, Y, and Z, right? Like uh, this per big person, this big person, this big person here, or we work with over, uh, there's over 792 happy marketing agencies that use our clients, including the names like X, Y, and Z, right? I, if you're sending cold emails, nobody wants to be the first to do anything. So I need to know how you helped other people with it. And I might join a platform just because I know somebody else that I know is using it as well. Cause I'm thinking, well, you know, if they're using, uh, if they're, if they're with that person, then it, they must be important. Right. Uh, so, and then it ends with, do you use Facebook lead forms for clients at prospect social? So, you know, I think that API ways, is, it sounds like a software, so they probably don't have sales calls, but I don't love leaving cold emails with open ended uh, endings because it's like, okay, then I respond back. Yes. I use lead forms. And then it's just like long back and forth, um, uh, of conversations where if I was Tim, I might change that to, um, are you currently happy with the integration between your Facebook lead forms and your CRM, right? Okay, then you can know, no, I'm not happy because it's frustrating. Now I know this person has a 10 times more likelihood of, of switching over our software versus just saying, do you use Facebook lead forms for clients? Because let's, if we're looking at a funnel, uh, their clients obviously need to be using Facebook lead forms. So it's like, okay, here is, I'm just gonna use rough numbers here. Here is 10 million people using Facebook leads forms, right? And I use Zapier uh, and I have a different video on Zapier. So you guys can watch that if you want to, but I use Zapier. So it's like, I use Facebook lead forms. Um, and then the one below that is like, am I happy with the automation that I'm using right now? Well, actually it would go, how many people are using Facebook lead forms? 10 million. How many of them are using a software to connect Facebook lead forms to a CRM? Let's say 5 million. And then the one below that is how many people that are using a software to connect Facebook lead forms to CRM are unhappy with the way they're currently doing it. That could be 
a hundred thousand. So if you're sending these emails out, let's say that a, the, the original question here, do you use Facebook lead forms? You get 10 million responses which is obviously an exaggeration, then you are trying to sift through all of this stuff just to find the, the 100,000 that actually are using it but are currently unhappy, right? And there's, uh, there's a great, great uh, bunch of great books and ideas around uh, levels of awareness when you're doing a sales cycle. And when you're doing cold email, you, you don't wanna go to the top highest level of awareness because that's gonna be a very long sales cycle for your cold email. And instead, spend some time when you're looking for your clients um, as well as spending some time when you're in your cold email to actually find people that are further along the awareness journey. If I was to give you an example, and hopefully you guys are still with me in this video here, but if I was to give you an example, what I would probably do is I would actually, there's a few softwares out there like built with where you can find people that are currently using different softwares and on built with, you can see if people are using Zapier. So I would go out and I would find people that I knew were using Zapier in my cold email. I'd be using text. That's like, Hey, I, I, uh, you're probably using Zapier for your Facebook lead forms. Here's why Zapier is, uh, inferior to our product API way, right? Then it's like, okay, you're giving me everything right here. It makes so much more sense. And I'm willing to hop on a call or, or test out your product or service there. Okay. Uh, thanks Tim from API way. Uh, you know, in the United States for C-SPAM laws, you do need to have your, your business address on here. So I think he's missing this as well. So I just think one or two more lines of text and Tim, you could have had a banger email here, but so far on today's video, I would give this one the best one so far. We probably put it at a six or a seven out of 10. Email number four we have here is from Surush. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Monetize your knowledge with and, and with interactive live classes. Okay, so I've, I've said this once, I've said it a million times. Uh, you make the subject line something a little bit more personal so that I'm more likely to open it. If I know it's a sales letter, I'm much less likely to do this. I talked about this in a previous video, but some of the best email copywriters of all time, uh, or I'm sorry, were some of the best copywriters of all time, they used to send out handwritten letters or uh, you know mass market direct messaging letters to people's mailboxes. And what they would do is would they'd make the actual physical letter. You know, For some of you may have never seen a letter in your life, you guys are so young, but uh, uh, they may, it would make a physical letter look like it was from one of their loved ones or from their mom or from their their kid and they're much more likely to open it that way because everybody knows or they knew i should say that if you don't get someone to even open the letter in the first place your marketing message no matter how much gold is written in it has a zero percent chance of working so i would change the subject line to something a little bit more personal now i'm not going to read this part here because this is obviously a follow-up let me read the first one here Hi, Ravi. My name is Suresh. I am the CEO of Lighthall, a streaming platform for educators. Okay. You guys already know I love a line of personalization inside of here instead of just straight to my name is Suresh. I'm the CEO of Lighthall because I don't really care. Hi, Ravi. The uh, reason I'm reaching out is I su saw that you were a industry leader in the business to business, uh, you know, educator space, something along those lines. I'm not saying that I am, guys. I'm just saying uh, flatter me. If you're trying to send me a cold email, flatter me with how you found me, right? Um, and then, so hi Ravi, I saw that you were an industry leader in the B2B education space uh, and I wanted to reach out. My name is Suresh, I'm the CEO of Lighthall, a live streaming platform for educators, period. New paragraph, remember, we like to add different lines, um, different pair, each line of text should be a different paragraph, it's easier on the eyes to read. We work with 80 plus influential educators with an audience of 10 million learners to deliver large scale interactive live classes on professional skills, P period. New paragraph. I found your YouTube videos on sales and believe you'd be a great fit for our platform. Okay, so Surish, what we should do is take this line here. I found you uh, uh, your videos on sales and I would move that below high Ravi, okay? Because now it is, uh, high, with that first line of personalization is above where we're starting to get into who I am um, or who you are, excuse me. Our top educators have been earning $10,000 plus per month, teaching live interactive classes with hundreds of paying learners per class. We have even an incentive program for new educators. We'll pay you $250 per live session and $5 per learner who attends one of your sessions. I love you. Uh, I would love to give you a quick demo and answer my questions you may have. You can schedule a quick 15 minute call here. So all in all, not a bad email. Other than those changes that I would do there, it gets to the point, uh, add social proof inside of here. Only thing I'd probably say, Suresh, is if you uh, could add in more specific names of people that are on here. So, okay, you run Light Hall, but who uses Light Hall, right? You said 80 plus influential educators like X, Y, and Z. Once again, 
don't be afraid to use people's real names or the real companies if you work with them it can massively help your response rates um, and then obviously did a follow-up and the, i will get service uh, credit because of all the emails i've gone through his is the first that gives you a reference in the follow-up email um uh not just in the original thread, but it's in the same email. So really, really great job on that, Suresh. The thing I'd probably say that I would just have to give him the biggest feedback on is move this, I found her YouTube videos above the fold, essentially, right below Hi Ravi, and also break out this text a little bit more so it's just so much easier to read. Finally, I don't know where Lighthole is based out of, but in the United States, C-SPAM laws, you need your business address and you need a way for someone to opt out to your stuff here. So all in all, I'd probably give this one like a seven out of 10. This is actually really good. And I, I bet that this thing's probably producing decent results for Suresh. Email number five here by Tufik. It says subject line is free gifts. Um, so, you know, I don't love it to be quite frank with you. The subject line like free gifts. Why do I care? You know, it's like people that message me and say, oh, I'd, I'd love to work for you for free. I don't want free stuff, right? I, if you're working with a business owner, depending on where they're at, they probably don't want free stuff either. They just want things done. Um, and also who are you? So why free gift? Also nothing in life is free. There's no such thing as a free lunch, right? It's 10 staffle. So just keep in mind that if you're saying free gift, it's like you're trying to trick the person and to be like, oh, here's this thing with no uh, strings attached, which is obviously there's strings attached. You want me to work with you. So I don't love that subject line. I would put it something a little bit more personalized. Um, Hi, Ravi. I completely agree with what uh, I completely agree with you to get what you want in life. You have to ask for it, as you mentioned in your last YouTube video. Okay, so uh, Tufik added a line of personalization, which I do like, but it, I had to read this like closer and, and read it twice to understand what he was saying. Already, you're losing in that instance there. So I would have reworded that a little bit, but uh, so I might say too thick, uh, the subject line might say something like, uh, regarding your last YouTube video, hi, Ravi, comma, new paragraph. Uh, I, uh, in your last YouTube video, you mentioned that uh, to get what you want in life, you have to ask for it. And that's been my experience as well. Just a little bit of change there makes it so much easier to read and understand. Next paragraph. I noticed that you have your own remote integrator masterclass, which is our, our uh, one of our products. And for some reason that made me remember an extremely succulent old recession proof campaign that made the founder a multimillionaire during the peak of the great depression. Okay. So I guess he's using a little bit of um, like, like curiosity here, but let's read the rest of it. So I put together an email inspired by that old campaign related to remote integrator masterclass. Also in the email, I reveal why I did what I did and why it is important to the reader. Do you want me to send it over? Okay. For those of you that have been paying attention and keeping up at home, what's the main thing that's wrong with this email, in my opinion? Exactly. What's in it for me? W-I-I-F-N. So I put an email together related to your old masterclass. In the email, I revealed why I did what I did and why it's important to the reader. It's like, okay, I, I, what, why do I care? What is this email going to do? Like it's, it's, there's too much ambiguity here. I know that Tufik is trying to add ambiguity. So I'm like, Oh, well, what is this? And what is this about? But at the same time, it makes me, um, for me, it bothers me a little bit. I would like, in my cold emails, I like to get straight to the point so that I can get someone to respond back and know that they're a good fit. Like I talked about one of the earlier people there, like just getting someone to respond is not your goal in cold email. Getting someone who's qualified and has a basic understanding that what you offer is paid and what it is, then getting them to respond. That's what you want. I'd rather have five people respond that actually want to work with me or potentially want to work with me than 500 people respond, but have no idea what they're doing here. Right? Um, and also it's like, uh, and for some reason that made me remember an extremely succulent old recession proof. It's like, come on to my online product made you remember this, that made the founder a multimillionaire during the peak of the great recession. It's like, it's just reaching way too much. You're making way too many jumps here. And, um, and it just, this whole email should be reworded to be honest with you. Like the only thing I like about this email is the fact that he had the personalization of the YouTube video, but I have no idea what this person does. I have no idea who they've worked with in the past. Uh, I also, that made me remember an extremely suckling old recession proof campaign that made the founder a multimillionaire. So you weren't even involved in what made this person the multimillionaire during the, it's like, so why should I care? Who are you? All these questions are left unanswered. There's no signature. There's no uh, business address. And, um, there's no way to opt out. So in all honesty, this one would probably get a one out of 10 from me.
The secret to generating millions of dollars from outbound cold messaging has nothing to do with the actual message itself. And I'm about to jump into my screen here and screen share and show you what it does have to do with. And then I'm going to write out a cold message for you that is guaranteed to convert. 